It's a real honor to be among so many old friends and some new ones. Um, I'm Gary Steger, and I'm often introduced as a former student of Seymour's, except I was never actually a student. I was rejected several times. Um, but, I, but I, in fact, I, I, I should tell the story where the last time I was rejected to be one of his students, I was walking up Columbus Avenue with him in New York City. This was in the late <clears throat> 90s. And Seymour said, I've been meaning to talk to you about MIT. And just as he finished that sentence, he saw out of his left eye a wind-up toy store. He dropped his laptop on the sidewalk and turned left 90 into the toy store. And that was the last we ever discussed me being a student of his. Um, but, I, I, but I've spent the last 30 plus years teaching logo in schools all over the world, encouraging teachers to use Seymour's ideas, um, led professional development to first schools where every kid had a laptop, and was the principal investigator for my own eventual doctoral research of Seymour's most recent um, institutional project inside a prison for teenagers in Maine. Um, and the Summer Institute that I run, that many of my friends here are a part of, um, is based on many conversations that I had with Seymour over the years about building bridges between the progressive education community and those of us who thought that computers and modernity had something to powerful to offer in the lives of children. You know, it's, the it's nice to follow up the 20 things to do with a computer paper and a discussion that Cynthia and Brian created uh, because I recently shared it in a discussion online and a teacher who was new to Seymour's ideas said after reading it, imagine if we had taken that seriously in the 70s. Because I would actually quibble, not everything is obvious today. In fact, the iPad can't do some of the things that are in 20 things to do with a computer. Um, so imagine if we had taken some of these ideas seriously where we'd be. One of my fondest memories of Seymour was when we were working in the prison, the first few months was incredibly stressful, as you could imagine. We were being treated like a cancer by the facility. We were bringing chaos to a place that was order, all about order and rules, and none of us were particularly good at following those things. And it was the end of the week, and I just wanted to kick back over the weekend and sleep as much as possible, maybe watch some cartoons. And Seymour came up to me that afternoon on a Friday and said, do you have any plans this evening? I said, no, Seymour, what do you have in mind? And he said, and I quote, I was thinking we could have a nice dinner and continue that conversation about changing the world. And you can't pass up an invitation like that. And it, it ended up driving cars into trees and climbing through windows and all the other sort of things that are associated with any evening with Seymour. But nonetheless, um, I've thought a lot about Seymour's contributions, and I work with K-12 schools, and that's what I want to talk about for a couple of minutes. I think his singular genius was developing the theory of constructionism, which was a theory about learning. And then he had the audacity to describe, for vivid examples, what that would look like in practice. And he also predicted how school would mess it up, how school would reject these ideas. And the, the criticism often applied to Seymour about him being some sort of naive utopian is completely false, because if you read anything he ever wrote or, or follow anything he ever said, he always sh showed exactly the way the institution of school was likely to reject the innovation. You know, I'm, I think it's important to recognize that he had a lifelong commitment to social justice, from fighting apartheid in South Africa, through the work in the prison, and, he, and the desire to democratize access to computing in Maine, and with one laptop per child, this is another critically important part of, of his legacy. Any of us who worked with Seymour knows that he was never happier than when he was with children. In fact, if you were trying to get him to a media appearance or to talk to somebody important, you didn't want him to spend time with kids beforehand because you often couldn't translate his excitement for what the kids were doing in a way that would, that would, be, that would impress the uh, unimpressible adults. This photo on the right was from a middle school in Maine where we worked together in the late 90s. And I was teaching the kids how to use Logo to program their own virtual pets. And this kid had just explained that in his world, um, when the pet is having too much fun, the police come to the house. <laughs> it's kind of like an interesting Rorschach test as well. Continue. Um, he talked a lot about kid power. I had a video clip that I don't have time to show, and Microsoft PowerPoint isn't showing anyway. But he believed inherently in the power of kids. We'll change slides where he talked about kids being a Trojan horse. The computer wasn't the Trojan horse, the kids inside of it who would bring about the sort of mega change in society that he had spoken of is, is the profound contribution that he believed that children had the, the power to, 
to give us all, that kids should be given maximum agency, that whenever there was a choice to be made in some sort of educational <coughs> transaction, the adult, the parent, the teacher should ask themselves, is there less that I can do and more that they can do? Can we shift more responsibility and agency? Seymour's great gift, perhaps of all, was despite being someone who was good at school and had a couple PhDs in mathematics, he cared deeply about and understood that other people learned differently and not everyone shared his experience. And that empathy was incredibly important. That's a photograph I took in the prison when he was trying to help a kid solve a robotics problem. And for kids who had been told over and over again that they were defective and learning disabled and labeled with a variety of pathologies, to see someone of Seymour's intellect and accomplishments say, I'm stumped, to put his head in his hands, actually was a life-altering experience for those kids. You know, to put it modestly, he predicted everything, as we heard earlier. Um, not only the, the technological stuff, but the idea version that would greet his ideas and actually most of the ideas of modernity or progressivism. He talked about the rise of instructionism, and all we have to do is look to the the headlines today about test scores and whether we're beating kids in Finland in long division uh, or, the, or the common core, where I remember Seymour saying quite vividly, at best, school teaches a billionth of a percent of the knowledge that's in the universe, yet we seem to quibble up endlessly about which billionth of a percent is important. As if a kid moves from Massachusetts to Mobile, we're deeply concerned they'll miss the monkey lesson. <laughs> Seymour would ask questions like, what can a child do with that knowledge? Which is a really profound question when you're thinking about teaching a curriculum. And I think he also predicted the kind of sad state of, of educational computing, where it's about compliance and no longer revolution, where it's about instruction and no longer construction. And many of us are fighting that. And these aren't new ideas. In 1971, Seymour said in ch Teaching Children Thinking, the phrase technology and education usually means inventing new gadgets to teach the same old stuff in a thinly disguised version of the same old way. Moreover, if the gadgets are computers, the same old teaching methods become incredibly more expensive and biased towards its dumbest parts, namely the kind of rote learning in which measurable results could be obtained by treating the children like pigeons in a Skinner box. It's clearly where we are today. Headlines, Los Angeles Unified, hideous iPad giveaway, where they pledge to spend a billion dollars on computers that won't function so that kids can be endlessly drilled and test prepped and, and, and assessed on uh, meaningless multiple choice exams, and the, ch the computers were confiscated from the children when they made them work. <laughs> they gave the kids iPads, and they didn't behave like the iPads the kids had ever seen before, so they fixed them, and then got in trouble and had the computers taken away from them. And, and the last idea that I think is really important is that Seymour had the audacity to dare to ask teachers to be better. This is why the education community, the K-12 education community, is, has tried its damnedest to erase him from the history and, and, and to minimize his contributions or to dismiss him out of hand because he actually believed that teachers were capable of doing a better job to create more productive context of learning. I'll skip that too much text. That's it. Um, thank you very much.